In this demo, I'm going to show you how to persist data so if your application is shut down or you restart your phone, none of the data in the application is lost. Rather than starting from scratch in this demonstration, I'm going to base it on the demonstration we did for Lab 5, which was the shopping cart. I'm going to base this on, I'm going to base this on the demonstration we did for Lab 5, which was the shopping list app. So we need to launch the shopping list app. And I'm going to add some private methods. So I'm going to find my homeviewcontroller.m file. And I'm going to add a string property for the path to my plist file. And I'm going to add an NS and I'm going to add I'm going to add an NS mutable dictionary to hold the plist once it's been loaded. So now I've added those extra properties, I need to synthesize them just like the uh, NS mutable array. To create to create our private instance variables. Like so. I'm now going to create a special method which will test to see whether the file has been copied across to the documents directory from the bundle and if it hasn't been copied across, to copy it across. And this method is going to return an NS string which will be the path that we need to access the data. Which will be the string we need to access the plist. So I'll create my new method under view did load. I'm going to return Then the string star, and I'll call this method path by copying file, which is what it does. And the, the file name is going to be the parameter. So ns string star uh, file name. Like so. So we've got a warning because we're not returning any, any values just yet. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take the file name and split it into the file name and the extension because we need that when we access the file in the bundle. We'll create an NS array. We'll call it the composite or components equals file name. components separated by string and the string is going to be the period the full stop so now I have an NS array which contains both the file name and the file extension so I can now access the file to see if it's in the uh, bundle There's my pointer to my main bundle. So I'll find the source path, the file I want to copy over, and a string um, src path equals bundle path for resource of type. Path for resource will be comp index zero of type comp index one. So now I've got a pointer, a string, which points to the resource in the application bundle. 
Now I need to access the documents directory. So I need an NS file manager. I'll call it file manager equals NS file manager default manager. There we are, there's my file manager object. Now I create an array of the paths. Is NS search path for directories and domains. There it is. The domains directory is NS documents NS document directory. The search domain mask is going to be NS user domain mask. And the expand tildes, we're going to say yes. So there's my array of paths. And the first index in the array will be the documents directory. So ns string documents. ns string documents. equals paths object at index zero. So I've now got a string to my documents directory. So my sort my destination path is going to be Documents, string by appending string, no, string by appending path component, and it's going to be file name. So that's my destination path. So source path, destination path, and we're almost ready to go. So now I need to check to see if the data is being passed across. So now I need to check to see if the file has already been copied over to the documents directory, if it already exists. So I'm going to have an if statement. And the first condition is file manager. File exists at path. Don't need the rest of it. Um, so it's the destination path. So if it doesn't exist in the destination path and the source path is not equal to nil, in other words, the file is there ready to be copied, <coughs> we can copy it over. So we need to create an NS error object, and then we need to copy the file over. File manager, copy item at path, source path, to path, dest path, error, error. And that's copy the file over. And finally, I want to return the destination path because I need to store it somewhere safe. Return dest path. Right, and the address of error, not error. Okay, so I've now got my special function which will copy the file over for me. Now I've created my custom method to copy the file across, we need to create the 
plist file in the application bundle. So I right click and choose new file. From the resources section I choose a property list and I'm going to call this one shopping. And as you can see all plists start with a root tag of dictionary. I'm going to add a new item which is I'm going to call shopping and this is going to be an array. Expand the shopping down. Item zero is going to be milk, which will be a string, and item one will be butter, which is also a string. So I've now created my plist. So now if I run this code, I want to copy this plist across into my documents directory. So I go back to my home view controller, I'll clear up view did load, and I'm going to add the methods now. So first of all, I'm going to say self dot path equals self path by copying file and the file name is shopping dot plist and if I log that I should get the path to my file so ns log self dot path. So if I run this now, then we should find that the we get the path to the documents directory with the file inside it. So it now runs and if I look at my log you can see there's my path to my shopping.plist file. If I take the path without the plist, copy it, and in finder go to view, go to folder. I paste that in, click on OK, and you can see that the plist file has indeed been copied over. So I'm going to try again, I'll delete it, leave the window open, run my application again, return to the folder, and you can see it's copied it across again. But if I now run it again, it shouldn't copy it across because it's already there. And there we are, so that bit now works. I've now got to load that plist into my NS Mutable Dictionary. So I can say self dot the dictionary was called data. And I've got to alloc init with the contents of the file. So NS Mutable Dictionary alloc init with contents of file. And the file is self.path. So I've now copied the entire content of the plist into that mutable dictionary. So let's test it. Always good to test things as you go along. Self.data. And let's see what we get. So if we look at here, we can see the in the log file, we can see that we have a shopping file. It also contains an array which contains, so it contains one object, one dictionary, which contains an array which contains two values, which is what we expected. The final step now is to copy the array part into my NS mutable array. Self.items equals self dot data object for key and the key was was shopping because if you go back to my plist there's my array called shopping so if I now log that to make sure it contains my two items should see the two items in the log file. So there we are, there's the original one, That's, there's the array called shopping. When I extract the array, I'm just left with the two items, as I'd expect to be. 
and as you can see it's already added them to my list. Now this self.data object for key creates a pointer to the array that's already inside the mutable dictionary. So when we save the dictionary it will already have the updated values. Here we are, so self.items add in add object message text. So what we'll do here is we'll save it back to the plist. So every time we add a new item it should save to the plist. So self.data write to file and the file is self.path atomically yes and that should save the data back to the plist. So let's test this. So we'll add an item and add. And now if I go back to my finder and I double click, you'll see the shopping has three items, milk, butter and bread. And we can repeat the same process for removing and for reordering. So let's do this. So we'll take that um, line of code, that's all we need to save the changes. And let's do the deleting. Okay, self item with object to index path. Then we delete it from there. Then we'll save it back to the plist. And then reordering, that reorders them. And that saves them back to the plist. So now it should work. So if we run it again, you can see it's remembered bread from last time. If I reorder this and put bread at the top, click on done, and I double click on the plist, there's still three items and bread is now at the top of the list. So last job, let's try and delete bread. Again, it's remembered it. Swipe, delete bread. And you can see there's two items and bread has disappeared. So I've now shown you how you can create a persistent data set for your application data. So if your application shuts down or crashes or you restart your phone, then the data will be preserved.